Hi, this is question number seven from the AQA Further Pure 4 January 2010 exam paper. This video is going to be split into three parts. There's going to be a part where you try the question. Um, I will then give you a hint um, as to how you can go about solving the question. Um, and um, the, I will finish off by giving you the full answer to the question. So um, first of all, um, if you'd like to pause the video now and have a go at trying the question. Okay, I'm now going to give you a hint as to how you could work out um, the answers to, to each of the questions. So, um, starting with question 7a, um, we're given this determinant here, and we need to use row operations on the first two rows uh, to show that 4 take away q is a factor of this determinant. So, um, what you um, uh, are allowed to do here, because it tells you to only use the first two rows, is um, uh, add um, multiples or subtract multiples of one row away from another. And what you're looking for is trying to get a common term in a row that's going to be this 4 take away, take away q. Okay, um, for the second part, um, you then need to express um, the determinant as the product of three linear factors. Well, hopefully um, you'll have got to the stage where you've got 4 take away q as a factor, um, so you can take that outside of the determinant, um, and um, so by dividing a row by 4 take away q. Um, and then you want to look to simplify the determinant some more, um, and then see if you can break it down into um, maybe a 2 by 2 determinant, and then finally, if you can get it in the form um, where you've got um, three linear factors similar to this one here. Okay, um, part B, um, you're given the matrix M, um, and you need to verify that this here is an eigenvector of M, and you need to um, say what its corresponding eigenvalue is. So now, um, an eigenvector is... Um, um, we get when we multiply a matrix by a vector um, and we get a multiple of the vector itself again um, and the multiple that we get will be our eigenvalue so you want to try multiplying this matrix here by this vector and um, this the answer that you get if this is an eigenvector you will get a multiple of this and that multiple will be your corresponding eigenvalue for part two of this question um, you need to uh, find what the other two eigenvalues of M are and say what the corresponding eigenvector is. Now the only clue I'm going to give you here is um, look at the similarities between this here and this here and decide how that's going to help you to find the other eigenvalues um, and then you will hopefully be able to find the eigenvectors. Okay, part C um, the transformation um, T has a matrix of M. We want to write down the Cartesian equation for any one of the invariant lines of T. Once we know what our eigenvectors are, um, that tells us what the invariant lines of any transformation that we carry out using M are going to be. So we would need to try and write one of those um, eigenvectors as a Cartesian equation to tell us what the invariant lines are. Okay, if you want to go ahead and have a go at answering um, those questions, um, so pause the video and try that now. Okay, welcome back if you've had a go. I'm now going to go over the answer um, to the question. So I'm going to start off by just giving myself a little bit more room. Um, this is quite a, um, a beefy question. Um, it's worth 9, 16, 18 marks of, of your um, exam paper. It works out to be about 25% of, of your exam paper, so there's um, quite a lot at stake on this particular question. Okay, so part A, um, I'm going to start by um, using row operations um, to show that 4 take away q is a factor of this determinant. So I'm going to rewrite the determinant. And um, what I've just spotted is that if I take 
the middle row away from the top row I know that that's going to make sorry if I add the middle row to the top row that's going to make that 14 takeaway queue and that's going to make sorry that's going to make that four takeaway queue and that's going to make that four takeaway queue and that's going to make that zero um, so I'm going to add the um, second row to the top row okay so uh, four takeaway queue uh, four takeaway queue zero and that's going to be negative 12, negative 1 take away Q, negative 7, 6, 6, and 10 take away Q. And I'm just going to write down over here what I've done. So I've done, um, I've found a new row 1 um, by um, replacing my original row 1 and plus row 2. Okay, um, now I can see that 4 takeaway Q is a factor um, of this, um, so to finish off, that's A part I, um, to finish off um, I can say that um, it's going to be equal to 4 takeaway Q and 1, 1, 0 negative 12, negative 1 take away Q, negative 7, 6, 6 and 10 take away Q. Okay, um, and there you go. Uh, I don't know why I, I put that there, uh, but I'll get rid of that. I'm still in part 1. Okay, now for part 2, um, we need to express this as a product of three linear factors. So, um, so for part two, um, we are. Uh, um, what we need to do is we need to try and simplify this further. Now, um, when we're factorising determinants, um, zeros are our friends. So wherever we can get any zeros anywhere, um, that's going to make um, our life a little bit easier. So I've spotted that I can, um, from the second column, if I take away the first column, um, so I replace column two with um, column to take away column one then that's going to make that zero there so um, I've got four take away Q and that's one negative twelve six and um, one take away one is zero negative one take away Q take away negative twelve is going to give me eleven zero take away Q uh, 6 take away 6 is 0, there we go, a bonus, another 0 and um, we've got 0, negative 7 and 10 take away Q okay right so now I've got a 1 here, a 0 here and a 0 here um, if I was going to expand this determinant I'd have 1 times by the determinant here of this 2 by 2 uh, take away 0 times by the determinant of this and this which is just 0 plus 0 times the determinant of this which is just 0 so actually I, I would just have 1 times by the determinant of this bit here um, so I can say that my determinant is going to be 4 take away Q times by 1 times the determinant of this here um, which is just going to be 11 take away Q negative 7, 0, 10, take away Q. Okay, and um, to, to finish this off then, um, the determinant of this bit here is just going to be 11 take away Q uh, times 10 take away Q um, take away 0. So in fact I can now write this as take away Q and we've got 11 take away Q times 10 take away Q and now we've got it in the form of three linear factors okay I'm just going to tidy up my work okay now in part B um, we're given this matrix here and we need to verify that this is an eigenvector um, of M and we need to say what its corresponding eigenvalue is um, so um, I said in the hints, if you watch the hints, that we need to multiply this by this vector here um, and then 
um, if that is a multiple, if the answer that we get is a multiple of this vector, um, then it is an eigenvector, and the multiple that it is will be our eigenvalue. So um, I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to do 16, negative 12, 6, 5, negative 1, 6, 7, negative 7, 10. Two, five, negative seven. Okay, and if I um, expand that out, um, I'm going to have uh, that times that, which is thirty-two plus twenty-five. Take away forty-nine. Uh, in the middle row, I'm going to have um, negative twenty-four. Negative. And plus 49 and then that's going to be 12 plus 30 take away 70 and that's going to be equal to uh, what about 57 so that's going to be 8 um, negative 29 so that's going to be 20 and that's going to be negative 28 okay so when I transformed um, this point here uh, sorry, this uh, vector here, I got this vector here, which is a multiple of what I started with, because it's four times as big as that one, so that means that this is an eigenvector, so therefore, um, we'll call it an eigenvector, I'll just label it as E1, because it's our first eigenvector, um, and its eigenvalue is going to be well it's four times as much so I'm going to say that its eigenvalue is going to be equal to four okay so um, so for the first part of um, B we have verified that it's an eigenvector and we found its corresponding eigenvalue okay so for, um, for part two of B um, where uh, it says for each of the other two eigenvalues of m we need to find a corresponding eigenvector um, right so um, I'm going to write down um, an equation um, to help me find my eigenvalues uh, and eigenvectors so um, we will take away lambda from the leading diagonal of this matrix here so we've got 16 take away lambda Okay, and lambda represents our eigenvalues, and if I multiply that by um, an eigenvector, I will get my zero vector. Okay, if you're not sure where this has come from, if you can go back and um, have a look at one of my earlier videos on um, finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, now um, the thing to spot here, and um, I'm not going to be able to get it all on one screen, are we? Okay, that's better. Um, the thing to spot here is that this um, here is the same as this here instead of q we've got our lambdas but it's exactly the same and in the first part we factorized this and we wrote it as a product of three linear factors okay so um that's going to be useful in a second because what we want now is we want the determinant of this here um, to be equal to zero because we want this to be singular um, we don't want there to be an inverse that exists for this so I want the determinant of this to be equal to zero and we know the determinant of this is equal to this here because that's what we found earlier um, so I can say that I want all take away lambda um, I'm re replacing the q with a lambda um, times by 11 Take away lambda 10, take away lambda to be equal to um, 0. So I want the determinant to be equal to 0. 
So that tells me that um, I've got three eigenvalues. I've got um, lambda is equal to four, which I've already discovered earlier. So that ties in quite nicely. Um, I've also got lambda is equal to um, 11. And I've also got lambda is equal to um, 10. OK, so um, those are our three eigenvalues. Um, and these are the two eigenvalues um, that we've been looking for. So what we want to do now is for these are the two eigenvalues, we need to find what the corresponding eigenvectors are. So um, I'm going to use this equation here, and I'm going to substitute, first of all, this 11 into this equation here. So that's going to tell me that I've got, um, so when, when lambda is equal to 11, um, this is going to be 16 take away 11, which is 5. Um, and I'm going to write my equation straight in. So that's going to be 5x plus 5y plus 7z is equal to 0. And then I've got negative 12x, and that's going to be negative 12y take away 7 z is equal to 0 and I've got 6x plus 6y uh, and 10 take away 11 so that's take away z is also going to be equal to 0. Okay so from this now um, <coughs> I should be able to spot that, um, that my whoops uh, that my um, x is going to have to be equal to negative y and my um, z is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so I, I could just have a quick look at this um, and if I multiply that by negative 2 um, I'm going to get something different to this uh, but the x and the y's are going to agree with each other um, so that tells me that my z has to be 0 um, and my x and y have to be of opposite signs to each other so x is equal to negative y and z is equal to 0 ok so um, so that tells me that my eigenvector um, is going to be equal to um, and I can say that well if x is 1 then y must be negative 1 and z must be 0. So um, my eigenvector, sorry, my eigenvector 2 um, is going to be equal to this here. Okay, um, I'm now going to do a similar thing. Um, I'm just going to split over here and I'm going to do this for my other eigenvalue um, which is 10. So um, when my eigenvalue is 10 um, I could stick that into this here, so I'm going to have um, 6x plus 5y plus 7z is equal to 0, and I'm going to have negative 12x, and that's going to be take away 11y this time, uh, take away 7z is going to be equal to 0. Um, and then I've got 6x plus 6y uh, is equal to 0. OK, so, um, and there's, there's no z there, 10 take away 10 is 0. OK, so, um, again, um, using this equation here, I can see that x has got to be equal to negative y again. So if x is equal to negative y, um, I can replace that there, 5y with um, negative 5x. So that's going to tell me that x plus 7z is equal to 0. So using that equation there, I can also write down that x plus 7z is going to be equal to zero. So, um, so that tells me that 
um, if x was 7 then um, z would have to be a negative 1 so for my eigenvector um, I'm going to choose x to be 7 which tells me that z has got to be negative 1 and because x is equal to negative y that's going to make that negative 7 there so that's going to be another eigenvector now just to remind you about eigenvectors that um, there's an infinite number of possibilities for eigenvectors um, so I could have had 2 negative 2 0 here I could have had um, 35 negative 35 negative 5 um, over here there's, there's, there's any possibility of eigenvectors that I'm, I want to write down um, okay so um, for that question we've now found our eigenvalues and our corresponding eigenvectors if you're a little bit unsure about any of that um, make sure you go back and, and have a look at the um, video on eigenvalues and eigenvectors okay um, I'm just going to tidy up um, the work that I've done and then we'll move on to C okay for part C um, we're asked to write down the Cartesian equations for any one of the invariant lines of t so we don't need to write down all of them we can just do it for, for any one of them so I'm going to use the one that we were given to start with um, so that way if I made some mistakes along the way then then I'm, I won't get penalized over here I shouldn't get penalized anyway okay so um, uh, right what, what I should mention actually before we before we continue is um, that w the invariant lines are basically going to be the eigenvectors the eigenvectors are going to be our invariant lines so um, so that's why I've chosen this here um, and I'm going to write this in Cartesian form um, so to write in Cartesian form um, that tells me x over 2 um, is going to be equal to y over 5 which is going to be equal to z over negative 7 uh, and there you go um, so we only needed to write one of these down um, I'll do it for the other two anyway so that was for eigenvector um, 1 for eigenvector 2 which is this one here um, it would be slightly different because what I'm saying is that my x is going to be equal to or x over 1 y over negative 1 are going to be equal to each other so x over 1 which is just x is equal to y over negative 1 which is just negative y so x is going to be equal to negative y um, but my z coordinate along this particular um, eigenvector is always going to be 0 according to this um, I can't write is equal to z over 0 because that, that wouldn't make sense so separately um, I would say um, that z is equal to 0 okay so that's how I could write it in Cartesian form okay so that is um, a, a answer um, we're not asked to give more than one answer but I'm going to do the third one anyway so the third one um, would be x over 7 is equal to y over negative 7 um, which is equal to um, negative z okay um, and we only need to have um, one of these okay so we'll go with um, we'll go with that one there okay so um, there you go that's that's the um, the whole question done um, hopefully I found that useful if there was anything on the eigenvectors um, side of things that you were unsure about um, then uh, go back and watch one of my earlier videos and eigenvalues and eigenvectors um, I hope you've enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you again next time